and now the vacuum is <laughs> Literally, there was no vacuum, <laughs> and I just hit play, up record, and <laughs> that's Ben. Ben has a really good timing. <laughs> well, we'll just go with it. It's the sound of progress. <laughs> Hi, this is Philip at Chateau Avensac, and today I'm inside the chateau. There are lots of things happening around the chateau, and so I thought I'd just sort of check in on what's going on. I'm going to start with some electrical work that's going on in the chateau. Uh, a lot of the cables have been run, not all, but a lot of them have been run. And I'm just gonna pop into the big kitchen. And in here, oh, <laughs> there's a Sylvain on a ladder. <laughs> Bonjour, Sylvain. <laughs> oui, merci. <laughs> Je, je filme le progrès de la cuisine. Uh, I call it a... Uh, ah, oh, mon dieu, le français. Ce n'est pas dans la tête, ça, aujourd'hui. Ah, ça, c'est le... Ah, ça, c'est le... Qu'est-ce qu'on dit, ça? Ça, c'est en, en anglais, a junction box. Boîte de dérivation. Boîte de... dérivation. Dérivation? So it's a bon to find a new word. Yes. Tous les jours. Tous les jours. Ah, that's for sure. You have a lot of gain and cable there. A little bit. Ah, just a little bit. No, it's fine. It's normal. More than the table electric. Pardon, more? More than the table electric. Ah, yes. I'm going to see the table next time. Ah, yes. And soon we'll see the table. Pardon? Les diventeurs. Oui, oui, oui. Bientôt aussi. Ah oui. oui. Ça c'est bon. Et euh, commencer aussi à poser un peu d'appareillage partout. Voilà. Appareillage, prise, oui. switch. Ah oui, 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 oui. Voilà. C'est bon. <rire> c'est progrès, je l'aime ça. Oui, euh, ça commence. <rire> Oui, et ça c'est juste pour les euh, connexions de les, tous les, um, ouais. toutes les choses dans la cuisine, les, les lampes, les, voilà. les prises et oui, choses voilà. comme et, ça. Et les éclairages, tout ça. Mmh. C'est bon. Après tout, j'ai un nouvel hier qui ne me plaisait pas. J'ai fait au plâtre. Ah oui, tout, pour, les... pour regarder le, le boîte là. Oui, okay. So, as Sylvan is working on the junction box in the corner of the kitchen, this box has all the cables for the kitchen, for the lighting, all for all the electrics, the stove, the plugs and whatnot. They're all coming to this one box. They all kind of get connected there. Somehow they remember what each cable is for. And it's going to be in the wall, but it looks like it might be a little visible, but it's not because this uh, large cabinet it's going to be slid down to the right, basically where Sylvan is now. And it's, the box is just at the level, just above it. So that when this cabinet's in front, it'll be just above the cabinet. So it'll be accessible, but not really visible when you're standing on the ground. So that kind of helps a lot with that. Uh, and soon they'll be actually hooking up the electrics uh, to this so that we can have some lighting and some plugs working uh, in the house. All right, so I'm entering the butler's pantry. This is right next to the uh, grand kitchen. And actually, I, I know I've shown this before, but no, it's just so amazing. I love the show it again. Uh, there's this green cabinet. This is the same cabinet that's in the main kitchen. The one that's in the main kitchen was upstairs in one of the bedrooms and we've taken it apart and brought it down and had it partially assembled. That's what it will look like when it's assembled. Uh, and then it will be painted. We have not picked a color yet. <laughs> uh, so this is the butler's pantry. There's not a lot more that's been happening here. And just on the other side of the staircase, the servant stairs, or the back staircase, uh, this is the, this first part is the vestiaire du chef. This is where, well, you can hang up your apron, really. <laughs> it's the apron closet. <laughs> and right behind, in front of me, is a small bathroom. Uh, it's just a toilet and a sink, uh, so a loo or a WC, uh, and that will be uh, a bathroom facility for the people working in the chateau. And then in this, ooh, let me back up, sorry. 
sort of tight little space. So you can see these are the stairs coming down. And just under the stairs is this short little door that we have to crouch down to get in. And there's a little space. It is just tall enough. I can stand in it. I am standing in it uh, without crouching down. So it's just tall enough. Above me is, you can see above the ceiling, is the landing for where the staircase switches back. And here is going to be one of the main electrical panels for the chateau. There's actually going to be I think three. So this is one of three electrical panels for the chateau. You can see I've got cables coming up from the bottom. I've got cables coming in down from the top. <laughs> I've got cables everywhere. Uh, and, but this is where they're going to hook up all the electric so that we can actually start turning some things on. So it's, uh, it's very exciting. I'm looking forward uh, to that. So here we are. And then in this little space, it's actually quite a little comfy, little cozy space. It's like the children's room under the stairs. Uh, there's also going to be a water heater for the kitchen and the bathrooms that are right near here. There's uh, one, two, I think three bathrooms. So there'll be a water heater for that. And, um, and maybe something else is going in here. I can't remember. I can't remember if there's another mechanic device, but there's definitely a water heater that's going in here as well. So there we go. Very exciting. Very exciting to see. I know I'm looking at a, <laughs> a cement wall. <laughs> It's very exciting to see these electric works uh, starting to happen because it's been, I don't know, maybe not quite a year that they've been working in the house, running all these cables. And now it's, it's getting to this point uh, where these cables will be the bloodline of the chateau. You know, this is interesting. There is this cement block wall here. It's unusual. It's the only one I know of in the house. And uh, it shows that, at, you know, at some stage in kind of changes going on in the house, uh, this wall was built. I, I can only suspect this was done a little bit later, uh, maybe when they were renovating uh, in the late 50s to uh, shore up the wall or actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure when this exactly happened, but uh, it's the only cement block uh, section in the chateau that I know about. So it's kind of interesting. Hmm. Always discovering things. And there's a little pipe there. I bet that's um, a drain pipe for the water heater. I was like, I don't know what that was. That must be uh, a drain pipe for the water heater for uh, if it overflows or if the security valve uh, has to release pressure. Uh, there's a release uh, on the water heater and it has to go into a kind of drain. So I was, I'm sorry, I'm glad someone thought of that. <laughs> because it'd be paying this to add that in later. Uh, just on the other side of that wall, let's sort of get a glimpse. Uh, is this little bathroom and right to the left here, I'm going to come down. There we are. And you can see there are the hookups. That's going to be the drain and the supplies for a little sink. So cozy little bathroom for the people working at the Chateau. When I say the people, you know, that's me. That's me and Mark and well, everyone that's participating in the Chateau. All right. I now want to look at, uh, uh let's pop upstairs. There's some activity going on up there. So I'm now walking up <laughs> the staircase. Um, and you can see these are actually the cables that are running down into the electrical box. And actually, if you look straight down there to the light, that is the, basically the electrical box just below us. So these are all these cables. There's going to be a wall built covering the, those cables and some of these pipes um, to cover that all up. And this, this stair landing has this little window. It was here uh, from this landing into the butler's pantry. If you look down, you can see the butler's pantry. It really just allows light to get into the stairwell. That's its real purpose. And so we've kept the window and we're gonna be putting it back. We're doing the same thing, like just to help bring light into the stairwell. So it's not always dark, at least during the day. I've come up the back staircase and I believe there's some work going on up here. Let's see what we've got. We are entering, oh my goodness. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Me is going on. 
Oh my goodness, I had no idea. Yeah. There's a lack of forethought gone here. They just made these on the top here, which means they're going to be proud of what we need to build on the top, so. All right, well, first of all, I don't think we've ever formally introduced Ben. This is Ben. I've certainly made comments before in the videos. <laughs> uh, so, Apparently, Should I yes. Okay, so all this conduit that you can see wiggling around. I'm standing here. in the middle of the conduit. <laughs> let me, here, hold on. Let me, let me uh, pull up myself out of the conduit. There we go. It is, this conduit has entrapped the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and this was rather neatly all laid following a line parallel with Oops. this wall here. Right, so on, under, on the floor. Along here. Okay. Um, but it was quite simply just laid atop, like this. Okay, like, hold on, like that, like that stuff, okay. So what's the problem? The problem is now it, it, the entire lot is proud of the build surface that we need to put the OSB and the tiles on. Ah, okay. It's too high. So right. I'm, I'm taking out this. Okay. Which will lower the depth. And then you're gonna... lie on top of that, and then the OSB will go. All right, so that's your that's what you've been working on is dealing with. Mark said something about working on the floors. Yeah, okay. uh, I mean, if we look over in that direction. Yes. So, the none of these uh, subfloor panels are coming back down. We'll okay. Take all of these out, and then we're putting in these joists. I shall be making a frame that goes all the way around the three sides. Right. But not the fourth because that's already too high. That, so, oh, so you so, needed something so, slightly shorter. So these width-way joists will rest directly atop that. Okay. Well, that's with, with, with a notch to bring them to, to the right height. Right. That's awfully convenient. Um, because, great. Yeah, All right, so, and what's going on in this is OSB? Uh, yeah, so the joists, then the OSB, then there is a, a, a layer of insulation, then the electric flooring, then more insulation, then the final tiles. Excellent. With the bathtub in that corner. Bathtub in the corner. And then in the bedroom, what are we doing in the bedroom? The same as here, just without the uh, heating. Right. So, this is so all, the, all the boards that we're looking at on the floor, mm -hmm. the floorboards themselves, that's all coming up. No, these are staying. All right, these are staying. There's no need to move. Right, right, right. okay, that's what I thought. So these are all staying. And then we're laying, uh, we're, but you're putting some beams across, you're putting these beams across. So, so some more of these joists, right. again, kind of framework, build it all up, like, like we've done in the other room. Yeah. Um, and then after that. OSB, uh, insulation, tile. Right. And so in this room, you can see we have some samples of the tiles. These are the tiles, these tiles were in the bedroom before we started all pulling them all out. And these are Tomet tiles, they're very traditional in this region of France, and they were used extensively in the house. These are probably original from the original build in 1820. And so we've saved them all, and we're just gonna put them all back down. But uh, we're putting them back down on top of a slightly different structure. Ben was talking about using uh, these small beams that he's gonna lay on top of the current subfloor. And that's because there was a very thick layer of sand which is how they leveled out the floor to lay the tiles. And since we're not doing that, he's now building a structure out of these, uh, these sort of mini beams. And in the process, he gets to level it all out, which is not the easiest thing to do, is it? Nope. No. So one of the things we love about Ben, he's just a little bit, um, what's the word? Parandikate. Pernickety, yes. <laughs> so he's really good at these fidgety, pain in the neck, annoying little jobs where you need a lot of precision. Yeah, and he attention just, to detail. He can just sit there and niggle it to death until he gets it right. If I were doing it, the floor would have a definite slope to it and maybe more than one slope, but because <laughs> I just don't have the patience for all of that. <laughs> all right, um, also the note. There is a door at the far end, and that's staying. There's what looks like a door here, but that's not. It's just that the uh, wooden stud that was there was rotted, and so it was just taken out. And there's a door off this little vestibule. 
from, from the bathroom side, which is, let me get back so we can get a better view of it. Okay, there we go. Uh, that door is being filled in because there's gonna be a toilet right in front of it. And the last thing I wanna note, since we have this floor open, I really love it when we can see what's going on underneath the structures, is you can see the slats of wood. That is the lath and plaster of the ceiling from the room below, and that room is the Grand Salon. And right under this pipe, this gray pipe crossing us, that is one of, the, one of two main support beams for this entire floor. And, and of course, holding up the ceiling as well. It's a huge beam. And there's a second one. If we just move a little forward, you can see yeah. right under uh, this wall, uh, just where the, the lath and plaster stops, there's another beam there. And these are so, and this is very typical in the construction of the house that each of these rooms generally have two huge beams crossing them. And then these other smaller ones, let me see, they, like this. Uh, that sit on top of them that support the floor structure of the rooms on the upper floor. So it's a rare opportunity to actually see that structure in place. Uh, it's also important that as you're walking in these rooms where the floors are exposed, that you don't step on the lath and plaster <laughs> because you'll just fall right through. And of course that means it'll create a big hole in the ceiling in the room below. And then that becomes a much bigger challenge to repair and to make that correct, to correct that. So, I'm gonna gingerly step out of the way. All right, let's leave Ben. Walking around the house looking for Stephen, who is working on this wall. There was an arch in the wall. There used to be a back there. Let me get back, there we go. You can kind of see the ref arch. And when the bathtub was put in, which was probably in, oh, the late 50s, early 60s, for whatever reason, maybe the bathroom was just a little too narrow, they dug out the wall and formed an arch just so that the bathtub could sit a little bit more inset. And we originally were gonna keep the arch, there's gonna be a shower there now, but after we uh, took the tiles off and saw all the construction of the arch, we decided it would be better just to fill it in and that the arch wasn't really serving much of a purpose. And so Stephen is working on filling it in. But because it's such a big space, it's literally like rebuilding the wall. So he's taking rocks that we have, uh, or stones that we have, kind of from what things we've dug up around the property and stones that have been lying around. Uh, and uh, he's filling it in. And you can see he's kind of built this form in wood so that uh, when he's finished, he has a nice move. Uh, wall by the time he's done and he's just rebuilding it with stone and lime mortar <laughs> and i want to say lime mortar uh because it's really important not to use cement in this kind of construction because the lime allows the uh, uh the moisture to pass through so you're not trapping moisture in the wall which is really a big problem in older buildings and a big problem of works that's been done in older buildings from the 50s where cement was used a lot. It was sort of not as well understood that the walls needed to sort of breathe, as they say. So you can see, like, I look inside, he's laying stones on the mortar and then he'll pour mortar on top of them and lay more stones. So, and they just rebuild this wall. We also, after he finishes this, oh, if I get over here, you can see this opening. This was a little niche where the green part is and the rest of it was just walled up. So we're gonna be filling in uh, that a little as well. Uh, originally, obviously there was a doorway there. So it's, you open the walls and you never know what you're gonna find. And since I'm here, you can see there's this pipe that's been put in. Ooh, look at that. And so also when this gets filled in, it's not just mortar, but some smaller stones are used to fill in the gap. So it's not just pure uh, mortar in there. Um, and that will make it more structurally sound and solid. And actually, if we just take a quick look into the library, which is right next to me, you can see this patch here in the wall. That was, That's a pipe as well, the same exact kind of pipe that's in that bathroom in the wall. And that's been filled in with the rock and lime mortar. And then we'll you know, do finished plaster over that. So that's the method that this is being done. Now, where is Steven? Well, I 
found Steven through the call of the mixer. So he is currently mixing up the lime uh, for use in uh, constructing, or reconstructing that wall and then filling in the wall. And we have this little electric mixer, which really helps facilitate the mixing of the sand and the lime. It's Judy from Chateau Avensac. Well, today I have a new job. I'm now the. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh. Hmm. I'm now the operations manager of the chateau. And well, we have a very large park here and, and a very small ride on John Deere mower. And it was taking so long, two days to mow the park and uh, eight times a year times two days. And it was just adding up. So I'm here today to introduce you to the thing I found that is the most important thing we've gotten so far. The tractor. Now, the tractor doesn't have a name yet. We've asked our patrons to come up with a name, so if you'd like to join in on the fun, be sure to become a patron of Chateau Avensac. Let me get the keys and, well, I'll take you for a nice ride. It's my bag. What? Oh, mmm. And, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Oh, and um, um, oh, oh dear, uh, oh, uh, oh, it's somewhere, oh, oh, and um, um, oh, and, and uh, um, uh, there's my keys. Now, let's go to the tractor and go into the park. Isn't he adorable? 1969 Massey Ferguson, completely redone and restored. And it runs like a champ. Let's go test him out. We are placing furniture. I think this is the second time we've been doing this. We're placing furniture in the grand kitchen because we're trying to determine the placement of the lighting on the ceiling. And you can see Ben is here. He's really meticulously good about precision, so it's great. And what we are doing is, I think we've got our tables placed, our chef's table is placed dead center into the fireplace. You can see our little laser line. And then if I come around, uh, you can see there's a ladder kind of folded over on the, against the wall. That is the range. There'll be a big hood coming down from the ceiling that kind of look like a uh, fireplace. And uh, the work table in front of that. So that's gonna be the main counter space in the big kitchen, so a nice big work table. And you can see this large um, wardrobe, it's huge. Uh, it's not in its final place, but it will be on the wall. It will be scooted all the way over to the right, so it will not be half covering the window. And to the left of it, there'll be a sink under the window and some counter space that is there as well. So we're just getting this kind of laid out, placing everything, and then we're gonna mark on the ceiling where uh, the light fixtures will hang because the electricians wanna Put that wiring in. We are just hanging our stand-in light fixtures to get a sense of their placements. You can see uh, Ben is on the scaffolding hanging them from the ceiling. 
My father constructed these exact replicas, and you can see there is one right here on the table. These are the light fixtures we're gonna use right here. Uh, but we actually have a set of six of them in white, and there's just this one in green that we'll use elsewhere, but it's the same shape. And, so, and then there's going to be a chandelier as well, just over the main dining table. So this is just so we can get a sense of where everything's gonna be. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, looking around at the activities going on in the Chateau. As always, thank you very much for viewing the videos and a special thanks to our patrons whose contributions help the progress of the Chateau. We really appreciate it. Thank you again. This is Philip at Chateau Avensac. It's just really gonna be a toilet and a sink. Uh, and then in this little dark hole is the uh, gonna be the electric box. And because it's dark in there at the moment, let me see if they have a light. Okay, it's so dark that I can't see anything. But there was, oh, there's a light. I, <laughs> I literally can't see it. So I can't, I'm just feeling for a switch. All right, I feel the power cord. I feel like there's something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'm, in, I'm in a dark little room. Wait, wait, what's this? No, 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 no. Oh, this shouldn't be so hard. This should be so much easier. Maybe there is no switch. Wait, what's that? That's. Um, I am now under the conclusion that I just have to plug it in, but it is plugged in. All right, let me take this out into the area where, oh, that didn't sell it. Uh, I, no. All right, I have no idea how to turn this on. This is now just getting ridiculous. So I think there is no switch. You just have to. I think you just turn it on or it is plugged in. But maybe. Maybe the extension cord's not plugged in. Oh. Okay, maybe this has to be plugged in. Ah, oh, that was the trick. Ah, oh, okay. So let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs>